next up I'll be painting uh, the skin tone first. The uh, reason why I usually paint the skin is because it's usually the most bottom layer. When I paint, I typically go skin first or whatever the bottom bottom layer is and then paint from paint up because I could always paint this, mask this off easier and paint the raised area and if there's more raised area, mask those off and continue going with that process. I find that uh, painting in this, um, this process works best for me. So what I'm going to do now is, since this is a, you know, the gray color, I'm going to spray on Mr. White base first, which is basically this stuff mixed in my uh, ready to paint bottles. The reason I spray the white base first is because, as opposed to just going straight into the skin tone, is each layer, because it's so thin, will inherit the properties of the previous layer. So if I sprayed on the skin tone over this gray, I'll have a grayish, grayish skin tone. Which, you know, is great if I'm going for a dead body, but since I don't want a dead body, I'm going to spray the base white first. Light misting coat. And then heavier spray over the entire part. Another trick you can use is when you're spraying and you notice that you spray too much paint, you can go and just press down for air pressure and sort of dry the part. And I can pull the other arm piece and you, you can see the comparison between you know the white piece and the gray piece. Now if I remove my sheet of paper here, it'd be an easier contrast to see between the white piece and the gray piece. Spraying the white base skin as a base color for the skin tones. These are my three base skin tones. I have the my base skin tone, which is the darkest tone, my medium uh, skin tone, and my highlight skin tone. What I usually do is I paint this first, and then I paint some highlights in, and then I blend it all in using this last, uh, the middle tone. So let's start off with uh, the base tone. Now since I painted this uh, white, it's going to inherit off of the white tone, not the gray tone of the primer. Same technique, light misting tone, like light misting coat first. And I see that colors are starting to show up. So earlier when I was painting this, I dropped this as I was holding on to skewers and they fell loose. So what I did was I pin, I added pins to the rest of her so that I could have uh, little hard points to hold on to. Now there's some Mars from um, when I dropped it. Now, I'm just going to take the sanding pad, it's been dry for a few minutes. So I could go here and 
kind of clear that up a little bit. It's almost like an eraser of sorts. Look for other paint defects and come in and start to paint, repaint, or repair some of those areas. The technique I'm using now is I'm spraying a little bit of paint and I'm spraying a lot of air. Spray a little paint, spray air. Now this helps it sort of dry on the surface a little bit. So I'm going to paint some highlights on to the main body. So this is what she looks like after she has the highlights done. Now I'm using my middle tone and I'm going to spray at um, high, higher PSI and blend everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray from a distance and just kind of hit it from all angles. And we're going to get a small amount of paint on the part but it will blend everything together. So it doesn't look splashy, but 
there's a gradual tonal variant. Again, always pick up the previous part and double check and make sure the tones are about the same. Now I'm ready to mask off the body pieces. So I'm gonna mask off the legs, the basically all the skin areas to expose um, this her piece of cloth here and her um, underwear. So for this, I'm gonna start with the masking tape. And let's start with her underwear. I'm just gonna run this piece of masking tape over here like so using my skewer run along the edge same thing on the other side run along the edge and with a very very sharp hobby knife preferably a brand new hobby knife just gonna lightly run it along the edge like so. And on the other side. You want to use a very sharp hobby knife because you're going to make very, very clean cuts. And once that's done, go ahead and Through. I should be able to just lift this piece without any issues. Like so. And I'm just going to continue along the rest of her clothing line. You also want to make sure you're overlapping so you don't have any missed areas.
Okay, I finished masking her off with the parafilm and and the masking tape. There are a couple of areas that are still exposed, like here. I'm gonna take a small sliver of parafilm. Make sure I have everything masked. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna use uh, some liquid mask, uh, Mr. Masking Soul. And this is kind of a catch-all. I'm just gonna apply this to most of the overlap areas to make sure This is just a sanity check of sorts to make sure I have everything covered. So this piece is ready for painting here and painting there. With this mask, I'm going to paint the pan area first. And this is just my base color. Black is one of those colors that's very, very hard to shade. You don't actually shade with black because it's black. But you can shade with uh, grays, uh, dark blues. So for this, I'm pro probably going to use a gray of some sort to, to shade this. But my first color is going to be this black first. So now I'm going to paint her top. Now, the top piece I'm going to use the same, you know, lavender I used for her um, sock as a base color. And next level will be the shade. Now I'm starting to notice a little bit of spatter, sputtering with my airbrush. That probably is because my mix ratio is a little too rich. So I'm going to add a little bit of thinner to this thin it out a little bit. I can go ahead and mix it right in the airbrush. And then it's gotten a little easier to spray. It's not I'm not hearing that noise where it's sputtering and splattering here. That's spraying a little lot more smoother. Now once I have this shaded, I go back here and blend. Now as I said earlier, black's one of those colors that's hard to shade. So what I have here is a kind of a dark, dark gray that I'm going to use as my shading. With all the layers of masking, uh, the, what I fear most is when I peel to the bottom layer, I'm going to have some paint lifting, which I already know that it's going to happen. Uh, it's just the nature of building these resin kits, is that you will get paint chipping. Sometimes you get lucky, and you've done an excellent job of cleaning the part, so you don't have any paint chipping. But the, I found that to be a very, very rare case. 
So I'm going to slowly remove this very, very carefully. Remove my parafilm layer first. I'm not too worried about the parafilm layers. If I could mask very well with parafilm and only parafilm, I would do just that. But since some of these areas need a very, very defined um, areas, I can't. So the uh, best method I've found so far is still using masking tape. There, I already have a chip right there. But I'm going to slowly move this. And hopefully, I don't have too much of that on this kit. I've got another chip right about there. And yes, this is kind of disappointing. But as you build, you kind of expect this. Well, the more kits you build, you can clean as best you can. But there are some kits that just will be played with uh, this issue. Slowly peeling back. This is not like one of those band-aids where it's best to just get it over fast and rip it right off. There's a little bit of a chip right there. Since I'm going to be fixing, fixing a bunch of these chips anyways, I'm going to fix that too. At least try to. Now that wasn't too bad. Now another reason why I use this uh, kind of sharp yet blunt uh, bamboo skewer is it's not sharp enough that it'll pierce through you know, um, some of the paint or the part but it is sharp enough just to lift up and pick up the masking tape. And I think for this piece, or this section, I think I went unscathed. Only this top section needed to work. Not bad. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is to keep me from screwing this up royally and I take some parafilm and wrap her top part this so as I'm working my way around to pick off the bottom masking I don't put nasty fingerprints or accidentally ruin this top part so what happened here was or as I painted it black when I masked, I didn't, I didn't hit that area. So what I could try... This Miss um, Mask is the reason why I use Mr. Masking Soul to try to do a catch-all. But, missed that one, didn't I? Looks like I have a missed spot right there. That's very unfortunate.
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mask off her uh, clothing. We're using thin strips of parafilm. And I'm just going to kind of run along the edge. So with this part masked off, I'm going to start masking off this piece here. So with this masked off, I could start working on sanding some of this paint chipped area here, here, and work on repainting those areas. Now that I have these areas masked off, I could go ahead with my sanding pad, sand around that defect area. Now the reason why I sand here is because with the paint chipped off, there's several layers of paint that took off. So if I just paint it right over here, there's going to be a distinct uh, different line around this paint chip that will show up if I just paint over it. So to combat that, I sanded everything around here to smooth that out so that um, when I get down to painting this, this should look seamless. Now, as I was sanding this area, um, I was chipping away more and more of the paint until I got to a point where the paint was um, still sticking to the surface. So that all I did was mask, or um, all, I did, all I did was keep sanding uh, lighter sh um, grits and have this gradual uh, paint pattern here. So this should be okay once I start priming this to put the fix in. Okay, I've gone and repainted some of the damaged areas. So I'm going to go ahead and unmask and hopefully those this masking took and my paint chipping problems are gone that doesn't look too bad now to take off this piece over sprayed areas are fixed <laughs> 